Hi there, welcome to a new video on the UK economy. If it's okay with you, let's spend a few minutes thinking about discussing one of the most important economic issues facing the UK at the moment, and that is our productivity problem. Now, it's well known that the British economy does suffer, does experience relatively slow growing labour productivity, which of course is a measure of efficiency. There is indeed a substantial productivity gap, nice phrase to use, productivity gap, with a number of other countries. The gap is actually probably about 16% if we look across the average of output per worker for the G7 nations, that excludes Japan and the UK. So what that means is that the UK produces less output per hour or less output per worker than in many other leading countries. And it's a key source of competitive disadvantage. That productivity gap is particularly large uh, with the United States and Germany, two of the biggest economies in the world. Although it does depend on how we measure labour productivity. Well, this is one such measure taken from the OECD's 2022 Economic Outlook, and it measures output per hour worked, and they've converted for ease of comparison and contrast into US dollars. And you can see in 2022, the UK had an output per hour worked of $55, just above Canada and Italy and Japan but well behind France, Germany, and especially the United States. Another way of measuring it is output per worker employed. So that uh, looks at total GDP divided by the number of people active and employed in the labour force. And in, in this measure, the USA is well ahead of the UK. It's 49% ahead of the UK percentage terms relative to what the UK's productivity is. France, 17% ahead. Germany a little bit ahead, not too far, but um, the average, as I say, for G7, excluding Japan, which doesn't make any difference, it's the same productivity, is 16%. Now, keep that figure in mind. Output per worker in the UK is nearly one-fifth lower than the G7 average. G7, of course, stands for the group of seven. Now, this is where you might want to press the pause button if you're revising for your exams and uh, maybe give me three reasons why the UK does have such a large productivity gap. OK, well, let me take you through some reasons. There are many, and of course, uh, uh, you, know, you might be asked to examine and discuss them. But understanding causation, of course, is important for better understanding how we can address these issues. I think fundamentally the lack of investment in research and development uh, is a key long-term factor. The UK does spend less on R&D than many other countries, especially Germany. And South Korea, we, we spend 1.7% of our GDP on R&D, certainly less than 2%. Germany, just under 3%. South Korea, closer to 5%. And this lack of investment in R&D can often limit the development of new technologies and processes, new production processes that might improve productivity. Secondly, there's some evidence that the UK doesn't quite have the same quality of management as in, in other countries. So a report by the Productivity Institute, it's before the pandemic, but it's still relatively recent, found the UK has a higher proportion of low-skilled managers than other European countries. So maybe there's a lack of training, uh, and um, fewer managers reaching those higher-level management qualifications, and poor management can, can hamper innovation and can lead to poor decision-making, short-termism, for example, which can impact on productivity. Another really key thing is infrastructure and investment. So according to the World Economic Forum's annual competitiveness report, the UK ranked only 36th in terms of infrastructure quality. So poor infrastructure, such as roads, railways, broadband, power sources, is not quite as advanced or reliable as in other countries. Uh, and of course that can lead to higher transport costs, longer commute times, um, slower connectivity, all of which can hamper productivity. Total investment in the UK is less than one-fifth of GDP. We tend to be a nation of consumers rather than investors. Keep that figure in mind for the exam. Total capital investment, public and private, in the UK is only 18% of UK GDP. It's higher in other countries. Now, I haven't mentioned skills. Some of you were thinking, well, I, I wrote down skills, labour, skills shortages as a key barrier. And in many ways, skills shortages deserve a point and a slide all on their own. There is an important link, an important connection between the performance of the labour market and changes in both actual and relative productivity in the UK. 
So weaknesses in human capital or skills are key to understanding the productivity gap in the long run. And the UK does have a relatively low proportion of highly skilled workers. Uh, people with the highest level technical qualifications or degrees or equivalents compared to other countries. Only 42% of the adults' population have completed tertiary education uh, compared to 45% across the OECD. And we know, we know reading the news, that there are skills shortages in specific sectors. Businesses perhaps growing, they want to increase their output, they want to drive the economy, but they can't get the skilled workers that they need. Engineering. Even social care, digital technologies, so on and so forth, life sciences. A report by Engineering UK recently found there's an annual shortfall of 20,000 engineering graduates and technicians. And of course, in the news recently, something like 100,000 shortfall in lorry drivers, logistics companies. If you can't get goods to market, if you can't get inputs to your factories in time, that's clearly going to affect productivity. And this chart kind of reflects... This is not this is not relative for it. This is just what's happened to output per hour worked in the UK since 2009, the global financial crisis and recession. The orange line is the trend. It's going up, but you should expect it to go up. Economies should become more productive over time, but it's not going up very quickly. Obviously, there was a bit of a, a disruption there during the pandemic, but look at the trend. The trend line isn't very fast. The UK economy suffers from slow productivity growth. Now, what can be done about it? So you might be asked in an exam, assess, discuss, evaluate the policies that might be most effective in helping to overcome the productivity gap. Now, clearly this is going to focus on the supply side, but keep in mind also that demand side policies have a part to play. Because if there isn't sufficient demand for goods and services, if factories aren't busy, if restaurants aren't busy, then uh, you're underutilising your existing resources and that will hold down productivity growth. But my main focus here is going to be on policy supply side interventions to help overcome the productivity gap. And again, you might want to press the pause button on the video if you want to have a little think yourself about which policies you would include in an answer. So what have I gone for? Well, uh, I'm going to give you three specific policies. And I think when supply side policies come in, it's important, it's really useful in an exam to think about specifics. Because a lot of students write in very general terms, the more specific you can be, the better. So here we go. First of all, the apprenticeship levy, which I think came in in 2017, if memory serves. Basically, any employer, a business with a payroll of more than £3 million has to invest, is it 1% in apprenticeships? The aim is to increase the number of apprenticeships available and therefore drive and lift the human capital of the workforce. So the government has tried an apprenticeship levy. It's trying to overcome the free rider problem. A business trains somebody up and then they leave and go work somewhere else. So it's forcing all firms to spend money on apprenticeships and training. There is quite strong evidence, by the way, that this scheme has been ineffective. Some businesses using the money to fund MBAs for their managers rather than vocational qualifications for their frontline workers. Migration will be important. And of course, the UK has now left the European Union. Uh, we left in 2020, so free movement between the 27 nations of the European Union uh, that has been replaced by a, a worker visa programme. So we brought it in in 2022. It's designed to deal with skilled labour shortages in specified industries and occupations. And that list changes over time. It's a points-based system awarded for things like salary, qualifications, experience and English language skills. So the idea there, I suppose, is to try and increase the number of skilled workers coming into the UK to raise average skills and drive productivity. And we talked about the fact the UK has low investments as a share of GDP. So uh, the government brought in in 2021, uh, partly during the pandemic, of course, the Super Deduction Investment Scheme. Now, that is quite a generous tax allowance that allows businesses, including many small firms, to deduct 130% of the cost of new plant and machinery from their taxable profits. So if you spend £25,000 on, on new computer equipment, for example, you can offset 130% of that against your corporation tax liability. So you have to pay less corporation tax. And it's really designed to encourage small businesses in particular to invest a little bit more in new equipment, new technology, so you've got more capital per worker. Interesting scheme. Now, we're going to, it'll take time to 
uh, for the data to reveal whether or not these policies, migration, apprenticeships, super deduction schemes, whether they will have an impact. And there are many, many other schemes, levelling up uh, schemes, free ports and so on and so forth, the National Infrastructure Fund, investment in things like Crossrail and, and in, in another generation, HS2. I haven't mentioned those. I've given you something very, very micro in a sense. But the point I want to make to finish with is that, is that labour productivity, which is one of the most important issues facing the UK, is actually driven going forward by a complex interplay, a complex combination of factors. Human capital. So we need a skilled and educated workforce. That's essential for productivity growth. Workers who can adapt to and take advantage of new technologies. Workers who can produce higher quality output which sell for a better price. We need to be a country that's open to and um, favourable to technological progress. That's obvious, isn't it? And of course, you need the skills to be able to take advantage of that. We need a bigger stock of physical capital, machinery, equipment, infrastructure. So countries with a modern transport network, a modern infrastructure system, telecoms network, are just way better equipped to drive productivity higher. We need competitive markets with businesses operating at scale. So we need enough competition to keep prices down, but we also need businesses operating at scale because economies of scale um, at a macro level, um, sorry, at a micro level, can make a macro difference. You know, can we get companies such as Walmart or, Walmart or Amazon uh, in, in the British economy, British-based firms that achieve that kind of scale of production? And I've also mentioned there the quality of institutions and policies. So that, things like the rule of law, property rights, so having good regulation in markets. They can also impact productivity, actually. So, and also macro policies, having the right monetary policy, keeping inflation under control. So countries with good, strong, stable institutions, countries with decent monetary policy, <laughs> tend to be more attractive to inward investment, in particular FDI. And FDI for many countries, and that includes the UK, uh, uh, is useful and important. If you, if you attract in businesses with a higher average productivity, it can also it can drive the average up in the UK, but it can also spur other businesses to have to compete. Reducing the productivity gap requires improving the micro foundations. You need good macro policies, but you need micro foundations to be secure. I said at the start that this is, I think, one of the most important issues facing the UK, the UK's productivity problem, the gap in output per worker and output per hour between the UK and other countries. So I hope you found the video useful in terms of your revision uh, and some good examples and some good supporting data. If you have, I would love it if you press the like button so that other people can uh, see the video. There loads more videos on the UK economy. If you go to our YouTube channel, I'll, I'll post a link in the comments section. But for now, thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious, and see you sometime soon.